Let's talk about definite integrals and signed area. Here we have a function f, continuous on the interval from a to b, and we're going to let pn denote the decorated partition of the interval a to b using n equal subdivisions and midpoints of subintervals serving as sampling arguments. Now that's a mouthful. What we really just mean to say is that p of n is going to be sort of the midpoint partition, and then the sum of f with respect to pn is just going to be the midpoint sum. So if we took a look at this in this case, here's one division, which doesn't look so impressive, but then we're going to let the number of divisions increase and we'll go all the way up to 30 divisions. So there's our midpoint sum with 30 divisions. So let's just take a look at a couple of the sampling arguments. Here's x4 star. And we'll notice that the value of the function at x4 star is negative. And that means when you multiply that quantity by delta x, you're going to get a negative quantity. So the term, the fourth term in this Riemann sum is going to be negative. And similarly, here's x19 star. And the function value at that argument is positive. And so when you multiply by delta x, you'll get a positive contribution to the Riemann sum. So basically what's going on is um, when the function value is positive, you're going to get positive contributions. And when the function value is negative, you're going to get negative contributions. And so you get sort of this signed area of the boxes. The boxes give you an area, but then the sign depends on whether they lie above or below the horizontal axis. Now what happens if we continue to let the number of divisions increase all the way up to infinity? What's the limiting value? So let's take a look at this and you get with finer and finer divisions, something that we can sort of interpret as signed area. And in fact, we define this quantity to be the definite integral of the function f from a to b. And it is what we interpret to be the signed area under the graph. So we'll take the area above and the area below and we'll subtract those. And that's what we mean by signed area. So here we have a function f on the interval from a to b and we're thinking about the definite integral and the value of the definite integral represents signed area under the graph. But there's another way to look at this. You could look at it the other way. If you can calculate the signed area under the graph of f, then you know the value of the definite integral. So sometimes, instead of evaluating integrals to find area, you might be able to evaluate areas to find integrals. So let's look at an example. Here's a linear function, and we want to find the integral on the interval from negative 2 to 18. Now, this has slope negative a half, and it's going to have a y-intercept of 6 and an x-intercept of 12, which you should verify. And if we plug in the arguments negative 2 and 18, we can find the corresponding y-coordinates. And now we're looking for this signed area. So to calculate the signed area, all we need to do is find the area of these two triangles. And the bases and the heights are very easy to calculate in this example. And so the area we're looking for is half the base times the height of the upper rectangle minus half the base times the height for the lower rectangle. We're going to subtract off that other piece because it's below the axis. This just turns out to be 49 minus 9 or 40. So the integral is 40. We didn't have to actually do anything special. We didn't have to evaluate a single Riemann sum. Just by knowing what the area is, we were able to calculate the integral. How about this example? We're going to integrate the absolute value of x minus 2 on the interval from 0 to 6. We should really get our hands on this function here. If we took a graph of the absolute value of x and then shifted it to the right two units, well, that's our function. And we want to find the in integral from 0 to 6. So we're looking for this signed area. Now, these are very simple triangles. In fact, they're half of squares. So we can see that these areas are 2 and 8, respectively. So we add those together, and the area we're looking for in this case is 10. So that's the value of our integral. Here we have the integral of square root of 16 minus x squared on the interval from 0 to 4. Now, if you don't know what this graph looks like, you can just use a little algebra off to the side to figure it out. Square both sides, add x squared to both sides, and you realize you're looking at the equation of a circle of radius 4 centered at the origin. But now if you solve for y and take the square root, you realize you get the upper half. So we've got the upper half of a circle, and that means the signed area we're looking for is actually a quarter circle. And since the radius is 4, that's going to be 1 quarter pi 4 squared, or just 4 pi. And that is the area we're looking for in this case. Our last example, let's find the integral from negative pi to pi of the function sine. Now, sine x has a symmetry. 
sine is an odd function, which means we can spin this graph 180 degrees around the origin, we should get the same graph. That tells us these two areas have to be the same. But since we're looking for signed area, the one above the axis counts positively and the one below the axis counts negatively. And that means the total is zero. And so this definite integral is zero because the areas above and below the horizontal axis cancel each other.